Hello, I'm Gilberto. Welcome to St. Louis Press Club's Hour in the Now series. Glad you could be with me today. Today actually is August 4th, 2020. We like to put the little time badge on it. Anyway, how are you doing today? I am doing very well, and I am um, Gilberto, as you mentioned before, Gilberto Pinella. I am the communications at Cortex Innovation Community. Yeah. I'm doing very well, uh, excited to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to have a, a moment where we can chat. Explain, if you would, your position, please, at the Cortex St. Louis. Okay, so as a communications manager for Cortex Innovation Community, I uh, do several uh, roles. I, I actually have like four or five different uh, tasks that I perform uh, one of them being a public relations individual. So whenever companies come in and they want to do a ribbon cutting, um, if they need some kind of advice on events and things like that that are happening in the, in, in the campus or that they want to do in the campus, I help them coordinate. I work with their marketing teams or the public relations teams on, on coordinating and be that liaison in between Cortex and the company or the startup that's coming in. I also perform the duties of media relations. So I communicate, you know, if I have to write a press release, um, I have to uh, coordinate an interview for my boss or somebody on staff or even somebody at, on the ground, you know, startup, um, all of a sudden a news media channel it's looking to do a story, a story on somebody, and they call me and they said, hey, do you have somebody that can provide this uh, service or this product that we want to talk about? And uh, so I do that kind of media relations as well. Uh, then I work as an event planner. So we do a lot of hosting for like like startups and companies and people that, are com that come to the uh, campus from the outside. So I may be a tour guide one second, or I may be collaborating with Phyllis and the team that works on startup connections, which is one of our big, one of our big events, but they don't happen at Cortex. They happen at outside at another outside location. And then finally I do all the social media for for the campus so i am always monitoring like right now monitoring facebook and twitter and linkedin and making updates and making sure that you know things are content is fresh and that i'm promoting you know the things that we are doing inside i also do a little on the marketing side i do which is one of the one of the aspects of my job too I do the purchasing or create graphics to do ads and things like that. So my job is never boring. I would imagine even during <laughs> COVID it was not boring, but no. I would like to go back to the time when this pandemic wrought havoc on us all. What was it like for you? Well, we, so the, biggest impact for me as the communications manager at Cortex and what I have to do is that my budget was frozen like everybody else's budget um, you know immediately the first week so all the plans that I had uh, everything that I had written in my strategic communications plan for 2020 um, all that was taking offline and said, we cannot, and I have a, my assistant just walked up. <laughs> uh, I have, uh, so um, that, was, that was the biggest impact with the, uh, when the, uh, the COVID pandemic happened at the beginning of it. And then the second part of that 
because now, so going back a little bit and explaining further, uh, I was not able to continue like our advertisement or support of some organizations or plan, you know, to help community like we like we normally do. Mm-hmm. So I, I did not have the funds anymore. So then uh, what happened after is that, you know, immediately we had to abandon basically our offices and start working remotely from home. Mm-hmm. And obviously that changes the dynamic, especially for somebody like me who's very social oriented. So I like to be out in public and I like to uh, mingle with people and either I'm in a board meeting one minute or I have a meeting in the afternoon or I'm working at SDL TV doing some taping or something like that. So personally, you know, it affected me greatly because now I'm at home with my dog, right? Um, But we at Cortex have, like everybody else, you know, um, have the technology and we can work remote within the campus so even I didn't have to be confined to my office to get my job done and so you know my home now is ex- is an extension of what I would consider cortex right because I can walk I can I can work with my laptop I can do everything that I was doing on location at that time so go back a little bit before you were ushered out, before everyone was ushered out. You were having powwows, I'm sure, with leaders, uh, executives, yeah. as such. What, what was that like? What was the conversation? I, I don't want to pry too much, but <laughs> talk a little bit about that dynamic. Um, well, it was, you know, about the technology. Yeah, I mean, everybody was, obviously, everybody was worried. Uh, number one, worry about the pandemic and worry about our, our health. You know, we, we had people that had that had to go immediately into quarantine because they had people at home that were uh, immune deprived. So they could, you know, they immediately had to take action and say, well, I don't even want to be close to anybody because I don't know, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be a carrier. And then have somebody in my family sick. Um, so we we had some heart to heart conversations about, you know, number one that, and then um, about that health, you know, taking care of, of of making sure that you're safe and and staying well and so forth. And then you know the financial aspect of it because the whole, you know, the whole dynamic changed financially for everybody, right? Um, now the startups that we usually uh, accommodated that were a one-person startup, or they they basically disappear um, because now you know one in, one individual trying to start their company and they don't they're by themselves, right? So now they couldn't afford to stay at you know at CIC. We had to close down uh, the operation because now we cannot have we couldn't have people in the co-working space mingling because of the, uh, with, because of COVID. So yeah. So financially we talked about, that's, that's one of the reasons why our budgets were completely frozen. You know, uh, I had to redo my budget for 2020 because, um, and keep the, the bare minimum because of, of, uh, you know, of what happened. And those were very hard conversations because then you start thinking about your employment too. You know? Appreciate appreciate that background. Or I think it's important to note uh, it's a hub. It's so warm and you know mingling place as you said, and then suddenly poof, everything is, has changed. So it appears that that there was a good pivot at least. Um, via the technology to stay connected, but it does take that element that is um, specific to Cortex away. Mm-hmm. So how has that evolved in, in all this time? We're in August now. That was what? Early March? 
Yeah, that was early March. That was uh, not early March. That was late March, actually, late March. Like around the 25th. Um, so we are, you know, we're we're moving forward. We have learned how to use our digital tools more effectively, you know, especially when it comes to meetings, and and we have to stay connected. You know, there's the we had events that happened, like for example, we just opened our hotel aloft. Uh, we had a, a soft opening there, and we did some media about it. It wasn't as big as we wanted to do, but we work with the team that um, that owns the hotel company. So we work with the marketing team. We said we're not going to do a big celebration, but we're going to do a soft rollout. Um, the hotel has been very well occupied from um, you know the first week. They it has exceeded expectations. We also welcome back like Visia, which opened a, a patio in dining, you know, dining in the patio. Um, and now we are bringing back food trucks, and they are becoming very, they're very proven to be very popular. So we're doing things. The gym is back open again. We uh, um, move by BJC is open again. So working with our partners, we little by little are adjusting, you know, putting signage to focus on people being socially distanced from each other, uh, wearing masks, which is, which is not mandatory, but is a requirement when you come on campus that, you know, we tell everybody and everything that we do out there to wear masks and so forth and so on. And, and working with the partners, I think uh, life is quote unquote, quote, coming back to a new normal, right? Where now we know that we have the flexibility to either work remotely if we need to, or be on campus. And it, it looks, it's looking different, but, you know, I think people are energized and ready to come back, but ready to come back knowing that um, they have to change the way that they operated in the past. It's no longer the same way. So Gilberto, uh, did you do a lot of hand-holding of your various stakeholders? Uh, we did, no, because they, we all, we all had, um, we, we had, so each and every company and, and for example, our innovation centers, like Cambridge Innovation uh, Center, which is the manager of, some of the locale of many of the locations that we have on campus, right? They they handle that for us. We had a very well prepared plan and protocols to follow um, to deal with the pandemic, number one, and then deal with the post pandemic period. How we're going to make the establishment safe and 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 healthy enough or, or clean enough so that people can come back and we don't have the problem of seeing an increase um, on COVID in our location. So there was not a lot of hand-holding. You know, there's not, we, we didn't have to do that. We had, we had a lot of well-planned, you know, protocols in place. And the key there, if there was any hand holding, it was the increase in communication, um, making sure that everybody knew what was happening. The transparency level went up to another level because making sure that if one of our, if if some, if a guard or one of the companies, you know, a security guard tested positive for COVID, we wanted to know or if an employee tested positive for COVID, they wanted to, you know, we all knew immediately what was going on, how we were gonna clean the place, how, how many people, you know, were gonna be in quarantine and all those things that you do that are very important in communication. It sounds as if there, were key, there was key messaging, certainly. Yes, there was key messaging already established. And if you go to our website, um, to uh, cortexstl.com, you can see 
that there is a section that is very, it's right there in front of the center. It's, it's called the uh, COVID-19 guy to cortex, right? So you click on that button and it tells you all the protocols that you need to follow when you come in campus, on campus. And it tells you, you know, which partners are open, who's accepting, what you need to do, uh, and, and what's not available. Yeah. So we, and I update that information like on a regular basis. So it may be a week and I, by the end of the week, I'm like, okay, where are we? And people give me information and then I update it. So it's always fresh. Coordination, coordination, coordination. Coordination, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's very important. So tell me your tools. Tell me about your tools. What, what have you been using? Uh, for, okay, so for communicating that, so we do a, a whole bunch of online right now. Online, uh, social, it is something that I use a lot, especially within the community. We're doing, we just re-launched uh, our newsletter that goes out to the community every Thursday. So that's a tool that keeps everybody informed about what's going on on campus, even through this time, and the protocols that you need to follow. Uh, we also, you know, the Facebook page, and we have two Facebook pages and one LinkedIn page. LinkedIn is more for the outside public and Twitter, but for internal publics, we use uh, Facebook a lot and people do respond to that. So we're beginning to engage, you know, with the food trucks and announcing yoga and doing things like that. I'm telling people, wear your mask. We also collaborate with organizations like SDL Maine to pass on information about what's going on, you know, whether it is like right now we're working on the campaign of wear your mask. And, and I uh, collaborate with them in putting information out there, whether it's through social media using Facebook and, you know, using Twitter, but also we have a kiosk, a wake finder kiosk, so when any visitor comes into uh, Cortex that's using the train, they can immediately see what's going on on campus um, because we have that Wayfinder kiosk right there. So those are the tools that, I, that, that I'm using. I do a lot of, you know, obviously I'm working remotely, but I have access um, to our publics, our internal publics via social media, via, via doing the newsletter, and then, you know, with, with tools such as the kiosk, the Wayfinder kiosk. And that sounds great. It sounds as if you also have access to your leadership, which is always important for a communications manager. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, I do. So, Our new CEO is very, very busy, but he, he, we are always in communication. Yeah. So, matter of fact, I have an email that I'm like, working on right now for him. <laughs> as we communicate yeah. yeah so you know so all this takes place we're still in a very bad situation with the pandemic and mm -hmm. um, COVID in our greater community unfortunately and and then comes along civil unrest and and protest how has cortex um dealt with that that next layer um, with regard to your institutional messages, for instance? So, so the first thing that we did as, as a group, and we, we, so we at Cortex for the last three or four years, under Dennis Lauer, when he was president, he established um, the, um, the inclusion committee. So we have an inclusion committee, and that inclusion committee always talked about uh, how can we bring equity and inclusion and diversity into what we're doing um, at Cortex because we, we are an engine of progress and development in the city of San Luis and the region. And we want to make sure that that engine allows for people that are in marginalized communities and people of color to um, be a part of this progress, you know, and have the opportunity to progress with us, right, to move forward with us. So um, 
the first thing that we did with the civil unrest is 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 show our um, letter of um, solidarity with Black Lives Matter. You can still go. I have left it up. You can still go to the news media section of the CortexSTL.com website, and you'll see our statement of solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement um, and, and how we feel about equity and inclusion. Uh, the other thing that we have done, which it just came out this week, it's also uh, now we're hiring, we're seeking candidates for the position of vice president of equity and inclusion. So this is, that's a first one. Um, it is a very important position. Sam Fiorello, our, our new CEO, such, such as Dennis, was Dennis Lauer. They are very committed to community and they're very committed to equity and very committed to inclusion. And that is something that is very important. And in some cases, it is the reason why I'm the communications manager at Cortex, because, you know, I am not your typical St. Louis communications person. Because I have an accent, I'm a guy, I'm a person of color, and, and I speak another language with an accent. So, you know, it is a very unlike position for somebody that it's not the standard mold of what a communications person in St. Louis looks like to be. And I'm not trying to be offensive when I say that, but the reality is that if you look at communications managers in the region, tell me who looks like me or who speaks like me. I'm pretty sure that's gotta be zero. So anyways, so we are very focused on equity and inclusion, and this is coming from above. Um, and we are really, really honored right now and proud of, of you know, showing leadership in um, saying to the region, you know, we are going to have a vice president of equity and inclusion. And that person is going to take Cortex forward in making it from what, when I jump on board, it was considered to be an exclusive club for one segment of the innovation community. Now it's beginning to feel more like it's a community where everybody's welcome. So that's yeah. where we are. Congratulations. Uh, it, it certainly is the whole idea of walking the talk. Uh, and I did notice the uh, position availability. So I was very pleased to see that. And from others I've been talking to in the media community, it seems perhaps there are new partnerships mm -hmm. to be gained you know, uh, among the various institutions in the community. So that's very exciting. So my goodness, have you had time to be tired? <laughs> or <laughs> you know, has this taken a toll in, in some ways on you? <laughs> No, you know, it is it's 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 lonely because I'm here by in my house by myself, right? So um that's the only thing, but you you put that out of your mind sometimes and you try to have as normal of a life as you can. Um, you know, and, and know that, that this is not gonna last forever. Um I'm taking this time to read things that I haven't read <laughs> in a long time. To, uh, to read books that I haven't read in a long time. Uh, I just finished Cien Años de Soledad by Gar uh, Garcia Marquez and uh, in Spanish. So that was like, that was a treat, you know, uh, going back fine, to the language. What I'm, a fine author. <laughs> I'm sorry? What a fine author. <laughs> yes, and I, I, uh, I really enjoy the book. and it, But reading it in Spanish with all the very classical, you know, period words that <laughs> it just, it was very interesting and I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, even, even though I speak Spanish, right, I learned a lot. Uh, so I'm taking opportunity of this time to be more 
connected with me and my environment and work on my spirituality. And it is tiring and lonely, but, you know, I know that this not, it's not going to last forever. So um, I'm looking forward to have a different perspective, you know, about life and work when, when we go back to this new normal that we're called post-COVID. Whatever this normal will look like, of course. Yeah. I'm curious, thank you for, for sharing all that with regard to your own feelings and your health and well-being. Um, in terms of innovation, have you seen or have you heard of anything that because of what has happened in the last five months, um, it's in production or uh, there's a powwow over um, uh, some kind of uh, innovation of some sort that we might see as a result of all this. Well, I know that um, I know that you know if, if you talk about innovation, I know that BioSTL and St. Louis University and WashU, uh, which are you know founding components of our um, our campus, they they are working on the COVID vaccine. So that. That, that has something to do with us, you know, um, because they work in affiliation. We're, we're partners, right? Uh, and BioSTL is housed out of Cortex as well. So they are working on that. Uh, on terms of other uh, ways to communicate or maybe ways to engage in things, uh, startups, I haven't, I haven't seen anything uh, that has come out like popped and let me know that they're like, oh, we're doing this differently or we created the system differently. But, you know, we have, we have, you know, months ahead of us that will be revealing a lot of different things as well. So I know that we have to have some startups that have became, that have become creative in, in doing what they're doing. Like for example, this is the way that I can explain this that makes sense. Um, we have a program based out of the Center for Emerging Technologies, CET, and this program is called Square One. And Square One is a boot camp program for entrepreneurs that are looking to take their business to the next level. So if you have an idea and you're a startup, you can come with that idea and when you end, this program, you not already, you will be set up with a business plan, with a marketing plan, with uh, all this stuff that you need, right? And then uh, we find you partners, with, you get partners, you get to experience co-working space and so forth and so on. So Square One was done traditionally on location at CET. But now Square One has become a program that has no boundaries anymore or borders because we do it via Zoom. It's all done virtual and you can still, like in the future, it will be a combination of doing it on location if you can come, but then we'll have the ability to broadcast this via Zoom so if you are in Kansas City or Springfield, Missouri, and you want to take advantage of this program, you can do it. Yeah. So those are the things that we are discovering through uh, this period. How are we going to change? How innovation of the future will look like? You know, it may be as simple as, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna focus on, you know, how how we. Uh, develop a door that can open automatically, but uses no energy. I'm pretty sure somebody is working on that, you know, right now. So, you know, things like that. And the, the biggest example that I can give you is that Square One program because, you know, it used to be in-house, on location, and now we changed the model, and in the future it's going to be a combination of both. So find it fascinating. I, I remember going to the uh, opening of CET, the uh -huh. Center for Emerging Technologies, and here we are today and I, at, at Cortex going there, and 
I'm just fascinated. I'm sure the audience will be fascinated to hear of all this. You're really speaking to many of the silver linings that have come forth as a result of really. Yeah, I mean, so. we're supposed to be we're supposed to be inventive. We're supposed to be creative and innovative. So, um, this is par for the course, I guess. Yeah. Well, Gilberto, this has been enlightening. Ah, thank you. Enjoyable, and I wish you nothing but uh, success in, in your position and uh, always good coordination with all the partners. It's, it's very <laughs> exciting. And I know it's, yeah. it's a job. It's a big job. So well, thank okay. you on behalf of the St. Louis Press Club, thank you for your time. And well, thank you for the opportunity. And you also thank you for uh, doing everything that you're doing to communicate and at least highlight all the good stuff that's happening, even even within this uh, crisis that we're living through. Very kind of you. Thank you, Gilberto. Be well. Be well. See you. Bye.